hell is that? Where am I now moving? I'm guessing my program had an update? Has an update or something? I'm back up? Thank you for that. I was uploading to something. I guess it wasn't entirely there. But yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, rehashing because it does look like my stream went offline for some reason, even though I was still uploading. What the hell? Anyway, um, last time we played Burn Castle's um, little puzzle. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for that. By all accounts, I was streaming, just apparently not here or something. Um, played the puzzle, figured out that it was real Kiri and Battler as the only ones it could possibly be. Spent two hours figuring that out. Didn't use any in-game hints. Yeah, that for certain. I solved it myself. Mostly. You guys helped. But, um... Yeah. A couple other things I just ramble on about. Umineko no Nakukoto ni Chiru. Nocturne of Truth and Illusions. And I'm... Why am I downloading? What am I downloading? <laughs> Alright, we got something downloading. I'm gonna guess it's uh, an update, maybe? How's stuff? That's going alright. Bit, um. <laughs> just kind of a bit busy lately. It's. and not. it's weird. Um. oh, have you seen the painting so far? Still work on it, bit by bit. I'll probably be working on it tomorrow. But it's the Elder Beatrice's portrait that I'm working towards. Little by little, painting them away. Cool, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of just odd things in life. Like, up there I've got two lights that have gone out. Which is why it looks so dark in my room, because I only got that one light over there and two backlights not facing me. Hey, um, I'm looking into um, more details of my move. I'm going to be moving um, come November, probably end of the month, beginning of December, somewhere around there. Not really set in stone, but around that area. And it looks like I'm going to be moving to Colorado instead of Dallas, like I was originally planning. So that's going to be something. Maybe I'm just nervous from that. But yeah, I'm going to go into a place I, I think I've been there once, but don't really remember anything I was a kid at the time. I'm going to Colorado Springs to move in with somebody, I don't know, probably getting a roommate cheaper rent and go do things well, it's kind of exciting and but <laughs> but yeah I, I've realized that the things I want aren't all right here so and just waiting for them to happen isn't gonna happen so I'm gonna go out and go do it I'm trying to get over my just like subconscious fear of doing shit so um what the hell am I downloading but uh, yeah it's uh yeah it's a new endeavor for me I guess 
it's not like it's a short little trip to Portland or Germany <laughs> or the like, or I'll just come back to normal. It's a completely by the seat of my pants type of thing. And I guess I'm always still worried that something isn't going to work out, but I'm forcing myself to do it anyway. Do it despite the fear. Let's see how I go. <laughs> Somebody, is anybody there? On oh, Hichan! <laughs> Angie flew out of the guest house sobbing. It is a good way to get going. Uh, one thing for me is I know I'm lazy, I know I procrastinate, so I'm trying to force myself in a position where I can't be lazy and I can't procrastinate and uh, forcing myself to do things. Type of thing. It works out mostly, but we're still figuring it out. Is there anyone still alive on this island? When she checked the cousin room earlier, it had been completely empty. However, she remembered that she hadn't seen Batman, George, or Maria's bodies. What she didn't know was whether this meant they were safe, or whether she was about to be reunited with them as corpses. <laughs> Still getting in here almost every day. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I'm working at it. Good day, fellow human. I'll put it in my Twitch integration. Please regrant any lost access. Oh, I might have to look into that. Uh, I'll open that over here. Thank you, Lubot, for updating me on something. Figure that out later. What am I downloading? What is downloading? This whole second stream, I've had something downloading. I don't know what it is. Not you. Not you. Oh, there it is. That's what it is. That should do it. There we go. Found it. Found it. On the culprit. Alright. But yeah, I'm still getting in here every day. And there's stuff about that too. I've been thinking. It's been starting to get rough with my sleep, but it. I've got 3 4 in the morning to do this. I'm going to sleep at 8 9 at night, and it doesn't quite fully add up. It's enough, but it's. Weird. You know, oh, I'll say this here. One of the things I have trouble. Um, I'm worried about, I guess, is managing this. There's one part of me that wants to just kind of trust my gut and go wherever the wind takes me. And there's another one where I want to try and set a schedule and keep to it. And it's kind of hard figuring out which one to go with. Like, for instance, the big one now is, um... Um, after Danganronpa, because it's ending, I was going to start up the, um, Lisa game. Um, not sure how long that's going to take. But at the same time, I want to start trying to do evening streams, which I did past a uh, couple of weeks, I think. But I don't know where I'm taking them. And my gut says shift it all up, change it around, do some of this stuff, but my logical brain says no, keep it steady. It's weird trying to decide on it. And this decisions, decisions. I'll figure them out one way or the other. I'll make do um, with what I get. Because I don't want to just like straight up abandon the stuff we've got going here. At the same time, I kind of want to go in a new direction, but I'm having trouble doing both. So, eh. Yeah, that's the stuff of, again, that's that weird thing I was talking about. It's not really 
bad heart or something like that. It's just unsure. I guess the word for it. Yeah, that's the thing. At the same time, it, yeah, it's, I'm figuring it out. But <laughs> the other aspect is, um, too stubborn to go anywhere. <laughs> Well, I can't do both at the same time. If I do it at 4 in the morning, the evening streams are at like 7 p.m. And that would just wear me out entirely. Yeah, that's, that is the question, huh? That's also one of the reasons I'm looking at the evening streams, too. It's, um, my time zone, for my purposes, 4 in the morning doesn't really work anymore. But I find I'm, I tend to be a bit more productive in the mornings than I am at the evenings. Really. Again, what do I do? <laughs> but yeah, some of the others went their own way, uh, doing their own thing. But at the very least, I'm going to finish up the Danganronpa and the Sumineko. That's um, a guaranteed one. I'm going to finish those up in the morning stream. Started than them, them then, and it's been I think almost a year with Umineko, <laughs> which is quite crazy when you think about it. Most of the year, anyway. So yeah, that's my personal kind of sort of deadline for figuring this stuff out when Umineko and Danganronpa are over. But how? So I'm trying to figure out. I'll let you guys know ahead of time whatever decision I do end up going with. But anyway, here we go. Where are they? Where? Answer me! <laughs> she dashed around in the rain. Feel free to keep chatting if you want, by the way. Where was she going? Nowhere in particular. The lost little sister dashed around in circles, searching for her brother, drenched with rain and all alone. Eventually, I thought I heard my brother's voice from beyond the bush. No, it wasn't just his voice. I heard George Onichon's and Marie Onichon's voices too. I called out at the top of my lungs, but they didn't answer. But it's okay now. And they're right there. Just on the other side of the fence. I could even faintly see them through the fence. When I ran around the fence, I found myself standing in front of a shed or something. It must be a shed to store tools for the rose garden. The three of them were standing in front of the shed. Hanichan! I cried out, but my voice didn't reach them. Even though I yelled so loudly. Oh, this is, um, Angie's in the, um, murder story and Battler. And them are the culprits. George and Maria are the innocents, so, and they're the last ones left. Something felt very wrong about all this. Oh, cool, really? Cool, man. Awesome. Uh, what course are you taking? Entry course for local university. Uh, more engineering stuff or uh, something different? Yeah, that's uh, sort of kind of related. One of the things I'm going to be doing when I get down there moving is I'm going to start taking some art courses. Not for degree or anything, but for personal lessons and workshops and shit. Just to be a bit more around artsy stuff. Is what I'm personally looking at. Don't know how it works. Don't know what's gonna go on, but that's the plan. <laughs> Robotic engineering after the entry course. Oh, cool. Well, you gotta make like a big old. Are you gonna be making like killer death robots or like uh, mech suits? Which one are you gonna go for? <laughs> but yeah. Who knows? If you do end up going down that stuff, you can make little robotic companions for like cosplay outfits. 
like little pet pet things that follow people around or something. That would be pretty cool, honestly. Just walk around with like little walking Sakataro teddy bear or something. <laughs> I cried out, but my voice didn't reach them, even though I yelled so loudly. Something felt very wrong about all this. When people hear a voice, even when they pretend not to have heard it, their bodies tend to show some sign that they've noticed. <laughs> Plain soul cat. Oh yeah, yeah, you're summoning it. Right, 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 right. Well, that would be pretty cool. Maybe you can like pre-program like a little dance choreography in it. <laughs> oh, cool. Robotics are pretty interesting. Um, actually, if you, uh, I know, uh, somebody has done it, but I haven't really seen much more of it other than it being mentioned every so often. But somebody put robotic servos and such and made a smart doll dance. I think it was a smart doll. It was either a smart doll or a Dolphy Dream. I can't remember which one. It was a while ago. But yeah, somebody had a little smart doll doing a little dance number. It was very robotic, but it was interesting. Might want to look into some of that stuff. <laughs> Get a bit more inspiration to go through all that stuff. When people hear a voice, even when they pretend not to have heard it, their bodies tend to show some sign that they've noticed. However, there was no trace of that in the three of them. Even though I was screaming so loud, it truly wasn't reaching their ears. Uh, no, it wasn't a stop motion. I'm pretty sure it was a uh, actual robotic servo. They like uh, took the external shell skin parts and stuffed servos and stuff in them. I think, like I said, I only saw like a uh, the equivalent of a TikTok video, a Twitter video, or something. 10, 15 second little clip of the little doll dancing. Can't remember where. I'm gonna say it was Twitter. Something like that. Even though I was screaming so loud, it truly wasn't reaching their ears. The instant I understood that, I dashed towards them, slowed, and came to a halt. Though we appeared to be in the same world, we were actually in different worlds entirely. It was like seeing someone on TV. Or was it more like seeing a ghost? I could see them clearly. But as far as they were concerned, I didn't exist. After all, look. Even if I stand in front of them, their eyes can't see me. I try and touch them. Will I really be able to? What if my hand just went right through? I was so scared of the thought that I could do nothing but stand there in shock, even though I was so close to them. Damn it! I don't have a clue anymore! Someone must have snuck in from outside the island after all. And they're massacring the usual family. No matter how we lock ourselves in, someone always gets killed. Yeah. It's the work of a witch after all. Everyone, calm down. Let's calm down and think. No one exists on this island except those with a direct relation to the Ishirmiya family. That doesn't make sense. After all, we've just seen several murders that'd be impossible for any one of us. So, Danny was, um... Yeah, it won't be cheap, not... Not at all. Um, I think Danny was working at the, um... A big smart doll to basically go to the store, pick up stuff, and come back for you. That kind of thing. I think that might have been around the time, um saw the video but yeah it's won't be cheap at all like you want one it's one million dollars or something like that but yeah still it's neat seeing stuff like that evolve and come to into existence no well, that's true but is it really maybe we've just missed something Smart, smart doll. I think, hence the name. Or at least the original intent of one of them anyway. Maybe? My history on 
my history is fuzzy. But yeah, he um is working towards that. It's more effort, time, and money than I can spend on that kind of stuff. But it's still fun seeing it uh, come up. No, I haven't. Um, but he tends to come out with something, um, get it out, and then move on to another thing. Which is somewhat of an okay business tactic, I guess. It keeps things fresh. Keeps people buying things. At the same time, it's really discouraging having discontinued shit. I hate that. I personally do hate that because I tend to be behind the times when it comes to things I want to get. But at that point, they're all discontinued. <coughs> but what you've been up to this time? I do know I think I have I think both my smart dolls are discontinued. All of them? All of them? Well, um... It could be because of the uh, pandemic. And not being able to... Well, that's not quite sense for a discontinue. I think the pandemic is causing some issues them to um, uh, maybe I'm just guessing all wait why did he give a reason why or is he just doing it I'm gonna have to look into that interstellar blue Standard and popular color, I think. That's very, that's what most dolls are aimed at. So how would you take milk away? I think, I think it was working towards a cinnamon. Not last um, I was onto that stuff. But that's weird. That's very weird. Okay, yeah, it's just milk and cinnamon 2.0 or something. If that's the case, uh, okay, that would, that would probably be it. He's just shifting over to the next stage, I guess, but still. There you go, it's... And from a business standpoint, it makes sense if, like, one is, um, takes more effort to keep going than it does for the new model. Just shift over there. Pre-orders now. I personally dislike pre-orders in general. Not just for any particular thing, but just in general because paying for something that's not quite there yet. I know. It. I'll go under the assumption that he thinks that um, cinnamon is better and Danny is a perfectionist and he works at doing the best thing possible or whatever his kind of mindset so get rid of the thing that doesn't work anymore and just go better with the cinnamon that's what I'm gonna guess his mindset is yes, at least that's how I'm gonna rationalize it it's still odd Of course, he's also the guy who has literal bins of trash parts in his store. Hmm. I disagree somewhat with that move, but... Yeah, it's, it's business, I guess. That's something. 
for example. That's right, maybe someone was playing dead. Since we're the only ones on this island, the culprit must be one of us. That means someone we thought was dead was actually faking. <laughs> uh, unless he comes here and starts watching Umineko with us, I doubt he'll ever know. <laughs> yeah. Let me get some magic for some dude on the middle of the forest on a mountain. That reflects poorly on him, not on me. <laughs> but Anarchy, that's impossible. Every one of the corpses was checked by someone. There's no way any of them were faking. He would. He, he'd come spend time out of his incredibly busy schedule to come stop and watch my stream to figure out that I told him I disagreed with his doll making process and then get mad at me. Sure, let's go with that. Let's go with that. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. But what if those corpses, corpse inspections, were also faked? Mm. It could have gone like this. There were multiple culprits from the start. Then one plays dead, and the other lies and confirms that the first culprit died. Then the culprit who played dead keeps on committing crimes. He responded to you? Wow. Alright, that's a... Uh, that's a bit odd. Not quite sure what's up with that then, that's... I've seen a lot of stories about mostly game developers and the like who start questioning fans about the decisions they've made and it rarely works out well when they start doing stuff like that. It's because it, it gets to a point where the fans, the people who buy your stuff, are the ones Technically, their opinion is a very important thing to consider. If they don't like it, and you're trying to sell it to them, it, it, it doesn't match up. The um, Their interest starts waning. Therefore, you say it's their fault or something like that. It, it starts on a bit of a downward spiral. But on the other hand, because um, I don't know the comment or what he said or anything like that, Trying to disprove untrue opinions. Like, you're doing this because you hate people. No, no, you're doing this because logistical business reasons. That is a bit more makes sense, but... I, I'm gonna have to look into that. I wrote a note, I'm gonna look into that, see what's up. Yeah, that's, that's definitely an odd situation. The most I can rationalize is, yeah, he has cinnamon as the new milk, and therefore he's discontinuing that and replacing it with this new, better version. And therefore, everyone should be happy with that. Or so the theory goes. Uh, but yeah. I don't know, his business, his choices, he can do what he wants, I guess. It could have gone like this. There were multiple culprits from the start. Then, one plays dead, and the other lies and confirms that the first culprit died. Then, the culprit who played dead keeps on committing crimes, creating the illusion that some stranger snuck onto the island. <laughs> Maybe I should actually start up my doll making business thing. They just invest a lot of money to do that, though, which I don't quite have, especially since I'm moving. But 
scales looking to bring that back up. That's in concrete. <laughs> Save up and buy one. Oh, cool. I still have the process. I still know how to do it. Just actually doing it is not a matter entirely. <laughs> Don't do this to me. I've already got too many directions I'm going already. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's, uh, 3D modeling, it's interesting. It's the part I've always struggled with in 3D modeling is animation, design, whatever, is the, um, rigging. I can get it close, but it's always, like, that weird harsh bend or like really soft bend where your elbow instead of like flexing kind of just morphs which never looks right I've always hated that stuff never had the um, patience to fix that stuff but yeah Not too many directions to go that was one of the other things I've stopped some of the other projects for um I've realized I can't do everything, nor should I even really try to do it all at once. So I've tried to focus and narrow down um, what I've got. And that was actually ideally one of the uh, things I was going to try and work on, because he gave out the three models for the extra, extra large bust or whatever the hell those were that he discontinued, which, fair enough, those are odd. But there is a market for that. But yeah, that was originally what I was going to plan on doing. Getting an extra large bus down to a normal size. Using that as a base and then building off of that. Um. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think the other thing I ran into was faces. I wasn't quite sure how to make a decent face. Eh, well, a lot of excuses, I guess. But, um... Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that again. Maybe. Thanks, now I've got more... breadcrumbs and trails to follow. the extra extra large is quite abnormal with some um, at least the ratio he's got in, in that model yeah it's I think I even have some spares sitting over I've got a milk um, bust sitting in a spare bag over there and I guess now I oh, I could probably sell it on eBay or something for a lot of money <laughs> but yeah, it's o over the past few months I've been trying to simplify my processes because you know early on I was doing chainmail and sewing and modeling and sculpting and game reading. Um, I found out trying to go in all of those directions, I didn't get very far in any one in particular. So now I've narrowed it down a bit to game playing and painting at the moment. You're bringing back in 3D modeling and then doll building and... <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I've uh, had that happen. That was... I think actually that model was the first one I, thing I printed on the printer. Because that was the reason I got the printer, to print out doll parts. The, um... Extruder model printers tend to be rough around the edges, which is why I got one of the resin ones. But the one I've got is itty bitty. Thank you for giving me more things to look into. 
It was hilarious, but yeah, it's... Well, at least you have the excuse of... You're a girl with dolls? I'm a dude with dolls? And printing out a bust as a dude with an extra large size? That gives a few bit more, um, questioning looks. Especially when I try and tell them, It's not what you think. That's not why I made it. <laughs> but yeah, it's... Very strange situations you can get into. I already walk a fine line with some of this stuff. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, if you have, you do get into back into that stuff and getting some of that stuff um, set up, let me know. Uh, share some pictures and whatnot. I'd be interested in seeing those as well. Because, honestly, you can do exactly what I was thinking. Um, Because, honestly, um, the part for me that I guess ultimately made me step away for um, the 3D printing with doll parts was the extruded printer um, little um, was too rough and it what I wasn't able to smooth out the edges I was originally planning on having that print as the mold or the object create a mold of that melt the cast out and then I have a um, a uh, shell I can repurpose for making more parts with. But it would have been with all those ridges, all those lines, which wouldn't have worked out. Oh, really? <laughs> right, 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 right. New boyfriend, new boyfriend, right. Right. <laughs> oh, that case is... I got nothing. That's ended. Yeah, but that's a lot of effort. And I was new and new. <laughs> yeah. I guess it will be. Well, congratulations preemptively on that. <laughs> it's worth it, huh? And yeah, this is um, a part where I found an excuse. Uh, it was shortcoming of myself, but. I wasn't willing to put that much time sanding apart to get it smooth to try it because it wasn't perfect enough. It wasn't a proper way to do it, which I know is now actually a false statement, but that was what ultimately led me to not doing things. I might try it again, but I've got enough to figure out already. But yeah, it's... um. Ultimately, the process for making a doll, um, you might actually get further into it than I did. Uh, they can actually get pretty close. The resin ones, I've got, um, this is a test print I've got here. Give me one moment. This is a resin printed one. It's a little odd because um, I was trying to see some little blemish marks. I was putting extra supports in there. But this is straight out of the printer. Um, cleaned up a bit. This is a resin print. As you can see, it's only the size of my hand. That's, um, I think, the biggest um, size I can make for the size of printer I have. They make bigger ones, and getting those ones would solve the issue. Um, um, yeah. They get really good with a resin one. This would have solved my issues, but again, it got... Oh, yeah. These resin ones um, are definitely the way to go. Um, I think even, um, they're now starting to come out with water-soluble ones, so you don't have to wash them in alcohol-only base, and stuff like that. But then they have the issue of those won't melt, like I was playing with the extruded model, so... But yeah. 
then you can just go have the wax malt. Thank you for bringing this back up again. <laughs> I'm already having trouble with um, keeping my motivation to a single direction. Yep, yep. Yeah, the one I've got was one of the original ones with like this by this by this size box. It's hard to print anything of actual worth out of there. But they've recently made some bigger ones. But they're expensive, and I've already spent it on these other printers and such. I might look into it later down the road. But at the moment, were I to go through with that process, I would get a resin one. They print out near perfect. A box for the hand packs? How... What did you do? <laughs> You're gonna have to explain that one a bit. Do you still suspect someone in the Shumia family of being the culprit? Dr. Nanjo was killed. So it's probably safe to say that he isn't the culprit. And we can consider the examinations performed by a doctor like him to be the most reliable. If so, then it's fair to say that the people whose death Nanjo Chek were almost certainly dead. Who did Nanjo Chek? Genji's corpse, Kraus and Matsuhi's corpses, Shannon's corpse, Goda and Komisawa's corpses. sure it's at least started good. Yeah, it's, um... I had one that... I, I never got to the point where I broke the printer. I had problems initially starting it because it couldn't auto-level. It would just go... and try to like, force itself into the ground to figure out where the ground was. I had a friend of a friend figure out how to fix that, though. So that's all well and good. But I did have one experience with the print going bad. I was printing out a figure. Um, just Samus Aran standing up in her standard pose. And it got 80% done. And then it screwed up the last little bit. Something shifted. And so it's like perfect, perfect, perfect. Good. It was just offset by like that little bit. Screwed up a few layers in. Yeah, yeah. And printers are finicky. Just printers in general. Hell, um. Yesterday I just set up a wireless printer in the radio shack I'm working at. The one we found in the back room. And it was okay. You got to do this and gotta go here. Get this app to do this thing to make this thing work with this. It's like, why is it so finicky? And then the first thing it tried to do was immediately print out um, all the paper in the tray at once. Like instead of going print, 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 it just took the whole chunk and tried to print it and then it said that there was a paper jam. So why did you do that? Why? But printers in general, are, they're finicky, they're weird, I don't know why they're so problematic. Sixty grand, Bob. Uh, this is, uh, I'd say there should be like some cutoff thing, but the printer can't tell. It's just you wanted this weird little spiral shape, whatever doohickey thingy. That's what you wanted me to print, right? They also take cameras and like sensors and gizmos and things that. Make it more expensive, more complicated. So, yeah. Currently, all those printers are based around you keeping an eye on it, making sure everything works right. And making sure there's good adhesion on the pl base plate. All that jazz. 
think back to the beginning and the bodies in the dining hall. Of those six victims, Dr. Nanjo only inspected Genji-san. But didn't the rest of us check the others? Yes, but Dr. Nanjo didn't actually inspect them himself. I need to get this going. It's been about almost an hour, man. <laughs> but yeah, printers. Why you gotta do this to me? I'm gonna be thinking about that stuff now. What are you talking about? Oh, look how could our parents have survived after being killed like that? Anyway, what do you think you're saying, George Anarchy? Wouldn't that mean one of our parents is the culprit? That's insane! They were killed right at the beginning. And so many of them. How could you accuse our parents of being killers after that? I won't let anyone, not even you, suspect and slander our parents after they've been killed like that. Sorry. I know my mama was really dead. So, does that mean George and Ichan's parents, or Battler's parents, were the culprits? Let's stop this, Maria Chan. I must have lost it a bit back there. George and Ichan went until Shen. That's enough. None of us have killed members of our family, right? I don't think George and Ichan lie and say his parents were dead. Not if they were really alive. There's no way George and Ichan would help out the crime if Shannon was going to be killed. Calmly, as though answering a quiz or a riddle, Maria spoke to George. Then, with a blank look on her face, she turned to Battler and spoke. Battler, you saw your dad's and mom's corpses, right? Yeah, I saw them. We all saw them, right? Those pitiful bloodstained. I think you're lying. Huh? Where the hell does that come from? Because that way, it all makes sense. Back in the dining hall, Battler's parents weren't dead. One of them killed Aunt Natsui, and Uncle Kraus locked the door from the inside and waited in that room. The other one took over the murders after that. To break open the closed room of the guest house, they needed to have an accomplice inside. That was Battler. That explains everything. It's enough! Stop it, battler -kun. You too, Maria-chan. Finally, all the pieces in the fit together in the wolves and sheep puzzle in my head. The culprits are Battler's family. <laughs> uh, that's fine, but... Am I right? It's... I'm trying to focus, not get more projects. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, I do have some of those things. But the, uh, going back, the biggest hurdle I had with the doll making process was figuring out where the hell to buy the uh, vinyl or PVC, you know, what have you, uh, the cast out of. I could find a way to make it, the metal cast. I could find a way to make a mold of the pieces, but I couldn't find a supplier for the proper type of vinyl. It was weird. <laughs> ah, it's, it's either I. I don't mind having you here, it makes an interesting discussion, but I do have to admit I'm just grumbling, I guess. You're rekindling that spark in that dream again. <laughs> uh, it's either or, it's do what you want. I honestly quite like having you here, but now I go off on tangents on this channel all over the place anyway, so... Not much of a difference. <laughs> maybe... Maybe it just has a ship. Maybe... That might... Eh. 
think of things now. <laughs> I am very good at coming up with weird, bizarre, abstract ideas and potential solutions to problems. Acting on them is another issue, but I've got other things, rabbit holes to leap headfirst into. <laughs> Finally, all the pieces fit together in the wolves and sheep puzzle in my head. The culprits are Battler's family. You, oh, am I right? <laughs> what are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> Correct. The voice came from behind Angie. She spun around, surprised. There, covered in blood, yet wearing cheery expressions, were Rudolph and Kiri. Ah, yes. Uh, speaking of thinking... Um, that is one of the conclusions I found out about life. You can spend so much time thinking, so much time preparing, so much time planning, so much time theorizing, hypotheticals, all that stuff. <laughs> uh, that is actually, um... One I'd be interested in playing. Because I kind of like the, uh... PvE story based stuff with that, and it's a bit slower pace. And it seems to be a pretty good game. Also, a hell of a lot of um, dress up options, which is always interesting, but never been a priority with me. But, back on topic, on the off topic thing. You can think and plan and do all that stuff, but none of it matters until you take action. And I've found that taking action, no matter how small, no matter how insignificant, taking action serves much, much, much more value than thinking about it. The free trial longer? Isn't the free trial to like level 30 or so? Would longer be more levels or would it be more zones? I don't know. Okay, 35 and 60. Will it work out? Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Again, I'm trying to narrow down the things I'm do working on, not expand them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I did um, try the free trial before I got to 35 or so. But, um,. the um, more jobs yeah realm reborn well if it's 60 that might be because <laughs> the biggest turn off for the um, Final Fantasy 14 is the paid subscription that is the um, biggest turnoff for a lot of people, but also it very it clears out a lot of the free-to-play bot spam type people, I guess, is the thought. But Oh yeah, no, I, I ran into plenty of content to 35, but so 60 should be pretty decent. But I'm just gonna well, set that topic aside for the moment, not focus on it right now, and focus on Umineko, because this is the last project I've been working on for um, viewers and says, yeah, that is um, one of the problems I've come into with a lot of free-to-play stuff. I'm um, not that the free-to-play games themselves are bad, but they tend to just everybody everybody is in a free-to-play game so <laughs> <should be there. laughs> 
but yeah, it's um. Oh, maybe. Thank you for adding more to my to-do list. <laughs> Shit. I definitely have things to look into now after the stream is over. But yeah, it's a. Uh, that was. Well, yeah, things. I personally like playing as supports, healers, tanks, things of that nature. And um, a lot of free to play games, like you were saying with Blade and Soul, for example, is more damage oriented. Everyone has a bit of it. Mostly damage and a bit of healing type of thing. And. Because I used to play Warcraft. Um, and I was the raid uh, restoration shaman healer and a uh, main sub tank small guild so we kind of swapped around and I very much enjoyed the uh, support things but a lot of the uh, newer MMOs don't quite have that they're doing away with the holy trinity of tank heals and damage type thing I don't know but um I'll look into it maybe once that new expansion comes out, and I'll take a look at it. But for now, it's just I'm gonna set it aside and worry about it later. That's a problem for tomorrow's me. <laughs> Uncle Rudolph and Kiri, I'm so glad you're sick. After saying that much, George realized what his words meant, and his face twisted into an expression of shock and horror. Maria wasn't surprised. However, she showed no joy at having her answer proved correct. And as for Battler, Angie saw it. That terrible expression. One that she would never forget as long as she lived. That's a problem for tomorrow's me. I'm gonna stick with that one. <laughs> it was a demon's smile. That's a problem for tomorrow's me. One other trick I've learned to um, help with indecision is being decisive. Funnily enough. Um, but again, this goes back to that uh, dilemma I have about my stream. Um, so, If you are decisive in a subject, a topic, let's say this Final Fantasy, for example. Um, I come up with the decision, that's a problem for tomorrow's me, I'll, or, or concrete. I'll worry about that when it comes out. When it comes out, I'll make a decision on it. That is, my decision is, it's a project that'll come up when the, the expansion comes out. I've now set that as the uh, standard, and if I just have it as I won't think about it until then, it frees up my ability to think on other things. So instead of, well, I could try it maybe this Friday? Uh, oh, well, what about like Thursday? Uh, I could look into it and you just start questioning everything about it. You then end up being very indecisive. And then when Friday comes along, well, what about, I, I could put it off till like maybe Saturday? Oh, Sunday would be a good day to try it out and look into it, but it's it's coming out on the 11th, so maybe I'll just wait then. And you start second-guessing yourself, and you just spend so many days, so many hours, so much time questioning and theorizing and potentially planning things. But if you go with, don't think about it till the 11th, you have all that time until the 11th that you would have spent thinking about it to instead worry about other things. And so the fact that you decided on it and just leave it be, that is the decision you go with, and then just go on with that assumption until it happens. Oh, the 11th. Let's give it a shot. Let's go. You've simplified your thought process. <laughs> Alright. And so, but that, again, goes back into my problem with the stream. I made the decision. Well, let's go with that. I'll play Lisa after Danganronpa and Umineko. After Umineko was Higurashi. But I'm having 
questions about the time slot. And that's bringing up issues. So I don't know. I'm fighting with the thought process of going with the decision of sticking with what I said I do or realizing I can do things in the evening now and shifting it up. It's, yeah, it's, I think that's honestly what I'm going to be going with after the update. I'll look into it, see what it all would take and ways of going about it. That's what. Sure, let's let's hear what you had to say for what you think I should do. <laughs> well, I'll still reserve judgment myself for the final say. But yeah, for Final Fantasy, I'm gonna wait till the update. I'll look into it, see what's up, and act on it at, on the update, either for or against whatever it happens to be. But yeah, but yeah, so. I found that sticking with the decision helps. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. on the I'll update what I can on the text after this stream. That's what yeah, put that there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll update what I can, but I'll probably have to update it again later on. With uh, some of my other things. But yeah, I'll update it after this stream. And um, going back to it, just on this topic a bit more, make a decision. I'll update it after the stream, and then you don't question it. I said I'd do it, so I'm going to do it. And you don't spend any time, well, I could put it off till tomorrow, or, well, I don't think it needs to, that much updating now, or and they'll understand if, yada, 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 excuse, excuse, excuse. You start thinking about it, excusing it, coming up with reasons you don't need to do it, and you just spend energy that you could be doing for other things, more productive things, if you just agreed to do it and went with it. But yeah, I'll update the text. Not sure to what, but I'll figure that out after the stream. Back to the story. It was a demon smile. A hideous demon that she'd never see again. That, that she'd never see again twisted its face in a foul grin. And the truly horrible thing was that she saw it on her brother's face. Now well, I'll do it over here somewhat. Man, you can see him right there. Smart doll. <laughs> Rudolph and Kirin lifted up the guns they had been holding behind them. The barrels pointed at the forehead of George, who staggered backwards, and Maria, who grinned as though she was beyond caring what happened next. But yeah, I do need to update that part. <laughs> there was a flash of lightning and a crack of thunder. Nothing more could be heard. Then, as George and Maria were snapped around by that roar, the strings holding them were snipped. Um. The two dolls fell into puddles with a splash and stopped moving. Dad. Mom. All of this occurred right before Angie's eyes. And there we go. <laughs> Angie, who stood stunned beside them, wasn't visible to their eyes. <laughs> yeah, 
they guffawed, overcome with laughter. Then, right in front of Angie, they started joking and complimenting each other on their skills so far. The three hideous faces, the faces of her family, made Angie want to cry and vomit at the same time, and she felt as though she would suffocate. Angie dashed away, covering her mouth. She wanted to escape the disgusting laughter coming from her beloved family as soon as possible. Then she slipped and fell face down in a puddle of mud. She didn't try to get up. In fact, she instead chose to cover her ears and block out the disgusting laughter that she could still hear. As she did, from the shadows of the fences and bushes of the inky black rose garden, several dark things slipped into sight. Angie looked around in surprise to see eerie black shapes appearing from all over the garden and slowly surrounding her. There was a crowd of people with goat heads. Their outfits were all different. Some wore suits, while others were dressed casually. However, all of them were covered with darkness, and all of them had goat heads. Angie, bewildered, accidentally let her hands fall from her ears. By now, she couldn't hear that disgusting laughter. However, in their place, she could hear the words spoken by the goats. Kiri and Rudolph are the culprits. Battler is the culprit. Battler is the culprit. Battler culprit theory. Battler's family culprit theory. As the goats continued to mumble in eerie voices, they surrounded Angie and began to draw nearer. They all pressed around her, each of them naming Angie's family as the culprits. At first, everyone joined in on the Eva culprit theory. The sole survivor from Rakanjima got almost all of the wealth to herself, so such a theory was only natural. Why was Ushirmiya Eva the only one who escaped to the Kuadorian? And why did she refuse so stubbornly to talk about what happened that day? It was decided that, Eva, that the Eva culprit theory fit all these facts. However, when Eva died of illness, the people learned that all the vast wealth she had created by unscrupulous means would go to Angie. Public opinion, or rather, forgers, created and spread a new culprit theory. This was the Rudolph's family culprit theory. If it was normal for everyone to come to the family conferences, why was Angie the only one who didn't come this time? Did Rudolph's family have some reason for not bringing the young Angie with them? They did take Battler, but he wasn't Kiri's son. Then, when it was revealed in some magazines that Kiri's family had close ties to a massive gangster organization, all lies suddenly gathered on Kiri herself. The truth of how Rudolph had made a killing out of a fraudulent business practices were also laid bare, and almost immediately the couple became thought of as the most suspicious people on the island. Hideyoshi and Eva's company might have been heavy-handed at times, but at least it had operated within the law. However, the more Rudolph's company was investigated, the more dirt was dug up. Furthermore, Testimony was dug up about various scandals involving party tickets from the time Rudolph and Kiri were students, and it was clear that they were far more suspicious than Eva's family. And so, in a flash, the Rudolph family culprit theory expelled the other conspiracy theories, including the Eva culprit theory and regained as reigned as the greatest of them all. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Have a good one, take care. Oh, um, before I forget, uh, the thing I wanted to talk about, I think I've got a better spot than this, but, um, one of the reasons I have trouble updating the text is that's there to describe who I am and what I do. I'm still figuring that out. So it's hard for me to pinpoint why people should watch me <laughs> and such. Because I literally started with sewing claws, clothes for dolls, chainmail. Sculpting, 3D sculpting, voice acting, and now I'm painting, so I don't know what I am still, so I'm still figuring that out, but 
I'm narrowing it down bit by bit. Now you had to narrow it down again. <laughs> but anyway, have a good day. I, despite all my grumbling and griping, I did have fun chatting with you about stuff again. <laughs> all right, have a good one. Have fun with Final Fantasy. You may or may not see me later. Oh, I'm um, in that sense. Uh, what server are you on? Yeah. Uh, well, maybe you can get back to me later with the, the server. Oh, I got better internet, so I might be able to do some stuff, maybe, but no guarantees. Like I said, I'll I'll think about it when the patch comes out. In the meantime, I'll focus on this game and painting at the moment. Yeah, fix that stuff later. It wasn't really because it was more plausible than the Eva Culprit theory. They had just gotten bored of the old theory and wanted a new sensation. Right. Should I get into it? I'll look into that as an option. <laughs> but for now, it's focusing on one thing at a time. The goats seemed to bend and undulate. The sky rapidly turned white, becoming a ceiling lit by fluorescent lamps. The goats had changed completely, becoming the shapes of girls wearing goat masks. Wasn't that a sight? All of the girls were wearing the same clothes. It was a uniform. The uniform of St. Lucia Academy. Did you hear? The real puppets were Rudolph and Kiri. I heard, I heard. Yeah, I knew there was something suspicious about them leaving their kid behind. Didn't you hear Eva say yourself that she was poisoned to death? Didn't it obvious who was behind that? Must be nice for her. She gets her whole family's riches all to herself, right? I always knew the Rudolph family culprit theory was right. I always thought there was something wrong with the Shurumiya san. Whisper, whisper, whisper. Giffo, Fico, Fico. Rudolph and Kiri are culprits. Isn't Batler a culprit too? Rudolph's family culprit theory. Rudolph and Kiri are the killers. They tried to get the family wealth all to themselves. But Eva killed them back and they failed. But in the end, Yushimi Anji gets everything anyway, doesn't she? Rudolph and Kiri are the culprits, of course. Rudolph sounds like culprit theory. Rudolph and Kiri and Batman are the culprits. Rudolph and Kiri and Batman are the culprits. They're saying our family were the culprits. Ushirmiya san. What do you think of that? Hey, what do you think? But in the end, you get all the family off to yourself, don't you? Even at the end, Ushirmiya Eva never told you anything, right? I always knew that girl was suspicious. This also explains why Eva hated you so much. Hey, hey, say something. Tell us what you think. She really is a creepy kid, isn't she? Can't you at least tell us what you think of this theory? Creep? A blade of air swept over me as I crouched down, holding my head. In a flash, the illusion of the female students with goat heads that surrounded me shattered. I will. I was curled up in a puddle in the rainy rose garden, surrounded by goats. But then, those goats were all so sliced in half, and the upper half slid to the side. It was like seeing a master swordsman slicing through a stick of bamboo. This way. The voice came from a black cat. The black cat with the bell had, that had guided me here. Incredible that it can talk. That doesn't matter now. I dashed after it. The goats shrank back. A hole opened up in the encirclement. The black cat dashed through it. As I hurried through it, the goats began to chase after me. Countless heavy footsteps thundered behind us. <laughs> Where are you running to, Mr. Cat? The cat ignored my stupid question. 
where are we running to? It's obvious. As far away as we can make it. However, there was an unbelievable number of goats. It wasn't just the goat the group chasing us. There were probably goats hiding throughout the rose garden, and everywhere we went, a group of them would appear and block our path. Each time we bumped into them, we ran down a different path in this maze of a rose garden. So I didn't even know which direction we were running anymore. It couldn't be. We aren't running around in circles instead of massive crowds of goats, are we? When we ran into the arbor once more, I learned that my fears were justified. The four paths that led from the arbor were all blocked by a crowd of goats. Of course, the path we had come down was also blocked by our pursuers. There was nowhere to go and nowhere to return to. We were finally trapped. <laughs> Mr. Cat, what should we do? We're surrounded. The black cat glared at the goats that surrounded us, standing on guard. It's all over for us. At that moment, I found myself floating in the air. A massive arm, large enough to crush my entire head, had grabbed my collar from behind. Before I could even think to cry out, I saw right in front of my face a pair of strangely glowing red eyes and a massive mouth with jagged teeth and a foul breath. The mouth opened wide, and as though it was a separate creature, a bizarre tongue stuck itself out. Then, it spat towards me. Rudolf, Kiri, and Batna are the culprits. Rudolf, Kiri, and... Rudolf and Kiri play dead. And Battler lied, lied when he inspected them. Then, one of the parents carried out the murders up until the second twilight and hid under the bed in Natsuki's room. Battler killed Jen and then assisted in the murders of the guest house. The other parent carried out the guest house murders. This is the truth. Then, that gaping, smelly mouth slowly began to close over Angie's head. Counter. It's possible to form a logical theory other than the Rudolph family culprit theory. A blue flash sliced off the top of the mouth that was trying to eat Angie's head, sending it flying. I fell into a puddle, along with a goat that was still grasping my collar, though there was nothing left of it above its chin. Without any hesitation, the goats stretched out their thick arms as though they'd been given a second chance to snatch this prey from themselves, and they rushed towards me. All of them spoke in unison. Anything besides the real summit culprit theory would be impossible. Absolutely impossible. It's possible to form a logical explanation other than the Rudolph family culprit theory. For example, a theory with George's family as the culprit is possible. Yeah, that was the other setup. But Maria's comments... Uh, do it. A red flash and a blue line became blades of wind that passed over my head. No, 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 because Battler's the one who, um... Oh, that was stealing the room. A red flash and a blue line became blades of wind that passed over my head, doubly slicing the arms of the goat that tried to pick me up. I think the next goat stashed not towards me, but towards the black cat that was protecting me from behind. As I sat on my butt, staring up towards the rainy night sky, the massive goats were in the air right above me, fighting the black cat, or someone. A George family culprit theory is impossible. George can't kill Shannon, so he can't be a culprit and he can't lie when checking corpses. No, it is possible. A culprit is defined as one who murders. No one ever said they have to murder a character who appears in this story. In other words, if George committed murder outside the island sometime before this crime, he could be a culprit without killing anyone on the island, and it would be possible for him to lie. The deep red curve spit into the goat.
His massive body was knocked into the air, became about seven logs of flesh, and was thrown into the rose bushes. This time, the terrible force of the attack shocked the goats. They faltered, shook, stepped back. Finally, I understood. That red slice, it had come from a weapon that could draw red slashes. No, it also drew blue slashes just a second ago. It was a massive scythe that could speak both types of truth, red and blue at will. I looked up at the sky and let my head hang down backwards. Hello, Erica. There was no black cat there. It was a girl holding a large scythe. How is that? This level of reasoning is possible through the Erica. When the crowd of goats recognized the girl who called herself Erica, a stir passed through it. It was clear that this person had enough of a reputation to make them tremble. Erica lifted me up, flew into the air, and landed on top of the arbor. Then she let go of me and, still wielding her scythe, made an elegant curtsy to the crowd of goats surrounding us. This is probably the first time most of you have met me. Allow me to introduce myself. Pleased to meet you, everyone. I'm Furu Erika, the detective. detective. If you're one of those black blockheads who can only think of the Rudolph family culprit theory, stand down. If anyone thinks they can counter my argument, please feel free. Of course, I won't be holding back either. Goats all howled at once. It seemed to be a cry of shock, of fear, of, or possibly of awe. The goats surrounded the arbor, chattering but not moving any closer. None of them had the courage to stand against this detective, this witch of truth called Frudo Erica. Good grief. All those thousands, and this is the best you can do? None of you has the courage to fight Frudo Erica in a battle of words. Too bad. Let's put an end to this. Then again, I, Frudo Erika, don't have enough spare time to counter all you blockheads one by one. I'll let her clean up the rest. You're up. Her? Eva? When Erika cried out, red cracks opened in the dark night sky. It looked like the spider web shaped fissures that appear when a glass window has been struck hard. Or is it more like a blood red spider web? <laughs> mm, that's her. A laugh rang out to the spider web covered world. A witch's laugh. It sounded somehow familiar to Angie. And there, standing on the spider web and gazing down on the goats who must have looked like trapped bugs, was the witch. You forget me, and you call him the ruler of Rock and Jima? You forget me, and you think Rudolph is the culprit? <laughs> it was the witch who had hidden inside of Eva. A witch of the future, who would one day call herself the Endless Witch after the cat box closed over this world. Who forgets Eva Beatrice and calls himself the murderer of Rock and Jima? How oh, impertinent. On this island, who lives and who dies is totally up to me. All the wealth and gold is mine. Everything about October 4th and 5th in 1986 is mine to do with as I please. It all belongs to me, Eva Beatrice. Eva swung her one-winged staff at the crowd of foolish goats beneath her, proclaiming their deaths. The ceiling of spiderwebs that covered the heavens plummeted, and more spiderwebs seeped out of the ground at the goat's feet. Then the webs from above and below met, and thousands upon thousands of goats were caught in their grasp. Then, as Eva swung her staff, it swirled around and around like egg yolk being mixed in a bowl. Eventually, it was all packed into a massive blood red goo. The moans of goats drifted out from inside. 
that entire crowd had been compressed into a meatball a few meters across. So, you moron stout that I'm the culprit? Reaching the Eva theory, oh, reaching the Eva culprit theory and giving up there is good enough for the likes of you. If only you'd just get crushed and disappear. Squelch. No other word could do that sound justice. After sucking in all those goats, the spiderweb ball vanished into thin air with a squelch. After that, there wasn't even a trace left. The dark rose garden lay there without any sound but that of the falling rain. Eva drifted down from the sky. Your aunt will always be on your side, Anji-chan. I'll never let anyone insult your family. And Eva... I knew I should be grateful, and yet... It really wasn't easy for me to believe that Antiva was my ally. Eva realized that too. Don't worry. I'm not doing this because I want to be thanked. But I'll always be on your side. See you later. She giggled, spun around, and vanished. Now that she had already left, I started to regret not saying even a thank you. So, I should figured I should at least thank the other person who had saved me. Thanks for saving me. Who are you? I already knew her name. What I was really asking was why she had saved me. I'm Furu Erika, the detective. And I'm also a witch. A witch? A witch of truth. One who searches for the single truth. And so are you, right? Those two days, October 4th and 5th, 1986. I've been so desperate to know what happened that I took a step off the roof of that skyscraper, drifted through several witch games and fragment worlds, and abandon myself to this long journey with no rewards. All I want is to know what happened that day. All I want is the single truth of that day. Searching for something like that is what makes you a witch of truth. So, you're just the same as me. That's why I came to save you. I want to know. Just what happened on that day? No one will tell me. No one knows. But I know something happened that day. I'd give up anything to learn what that was. That's the one thing I need to know, no matter what. Even if it kills me. So tell me. You know, don't you? You know what happened on that island, right? Does a witch of truth expect to be given the truth? If I told you that so-and-so was the truth, would you really just accept whatever I said? No, I wouldn't. What did Battler-san show you today? Today, Oni-chan showed me a bizarre Halloween party. It may have been heartwarming and a lot of fun, but it definitely wasn't the truth. Did Battler san show you something and say it was the truth? It's not. That couldn't be the truth. Sometimes, other people try to mislead us by claiming that they know the truth. But a real witch of truth must continue to pursue the single truth without being led astray. That's why you can't accept the fake truth that Battler san is trying to force on you. You care about finding the one real truth more than anything. Yeah. Onichan 
It was trying to confuse me. I felt that this whole time. Even though he knows everything about what happened that day, he won't tell me anything at all. How is he any different from Aunt Eva, who mocked me and refused to tell me anything, even until the very moment of her death? Why won't Anichan tell me? Why? Why won't he tell me? The dam inside my heart burst. Why won't Anichan tell me what really happened? Why? Why? I'm the only one who doesn't know. No one's telling me the truth. Tell me. Tell me what happened on the day, Onichan. Onichan! I cried out at the rainy night sky. Hot tears poured from my eyes, but they were covered by the cold rain that beats against me, so no one other than me would know that they were tears. No one would know my pain and sadness. I'm always the one, the only one alone, all alone. Someone, tell me! Tell me what happened that day! No one can tell you. After all, you can only find the truth if you look for yourself. Where is the truth? How can I find it? Everyone's hiding it. They won't tell me. I'll find it myself. So please, just tell me where the truth is hidden. Very well. I can tell you. As that voice rang out, the world bent and swirled. After blinking several times, I realized that the world had become a sea of stars. No, that's not quite right. There are stars up there in the sky, but those lights below me aren't stars. They're lights from building windows, street lights, car lights. I was floating in the dark sky over a city lined with skyscrapers. I can't tell you what the truth is. However, if it's a question of how the truth can be reached, I can show you the way. You... Various bad memories are jumping out at me from the back of my mind. That's right. I was chained in place in that strange theater, and forced to watch a repulsive fragment where Mom and Dad committed murder. I never said that that was the truth. But I heard what you said with the red. I'll say it just for you, that this is all the truth. You yelled out and interrupted, stopping me from saying any more. I was about to say that this is all truth. Is it necessarily so? Just how far are you willing to go to mock me? I apologize, but I did want to test you. Test me how? I wanted to see if you were ready to accept the truth, no matter what it may be. The truth can betray you sometimes. In fact, there are times when it shows itself as the thing you desire least. That fragment I showed you was probably the worst one you could possibly imagine. However, if you lack the strength and the courage to withstand even something like that, then you aren't fit to reach the truth. I have no comeback. Finding the truth is my goal. I just want to know what happened on that island on that day. I don't like to think that I only want to hear what I want to hear. Am I really prepared to face the bloody, unbearable truth that probably awaits me? If I find the truth, it'll mean having to look straight at my family's tragic final moments and accepting them as they are. And if I do accept that, it means abandoning my faint hope for a convenient miracle. The idea that one of them might have survived somehow, and might return even though twelve years have passed. I know a miracle like that would be completely ridiculous, but if I'm honest with myself, 
I have to admit that I've been com comforted by that faint hope these past 12 years. I want to know the truth, but I want one of them to come back. Those two wishes contradict each other. By learning the truth, I'll be forced to accept that no one's coming home. The truth is always cruel. At times, it can even cut down your hope. Most of the time, humans don't realize the costs of learning the truth. I simply want to see if you have the necessary resolve. I must choose between my two contradicting wishes. Will I find the truth and abandon my optimistic hopes for my family's return? Or will I give up on the truth and keep waiting for the family that will never really return for all eternity? Will I freeze up and let myself be fooled by the childish illusion my brother made for me? Tell me, Angie, are you truly determined to learn the truth? I am. And your resolve will not falter? It won't. After hearing my immediate reply, Burncastle stared at me. Are those expressionless eyes of hers measuring my resolve? Now that my brother is covering up the truth even after becoming Game Master, the only thing I can rely on in my search for the truth is a path that Burncastle can show me. Deep in your eyes, I see the glint of one who seeks the truth. Will you tell me? Will you show me the way that leads to the truth? Yes. I'll guide you. Did you forget, Angie? I'm your guardian, right? How long has it been since I last heard Burncastle use that word? Yes, I haven't heard it since the very beginning, when I met her in this future world and became a witch with her as my guardian. And that's when I became the Beatrice of 1998, the one who could defeat the Beatrice of 1986. You are the Beatrice of 1998. Angie Beatrice. I became your guardian and recognized you as a witch. However, you aren't an endless witch like Beato, a witch of truth. That's right. You're like Erika, a witch of truth who will seek the single truth, undeceived by any illusions. I guess the witch of truth, Angie Beatrice, has the power to reach the single truth. Yes. However, up until now, you have been unable to use this power. Do you know why? I do now. Even though I searched for the truth, I unconsciously resisted learning the truth. Exactly. Finding the truth was your goal. But at the same time, you are unconsciously afraid that learning the truth would mean losing that miracle of your family coming back. So, you didn't have what it took to search your, stretch your hand out to the single truth. You're completely right. I have to admit that I was naive. I must admit, my entire family is dead. Now that I've acknowledged it, I must expose why they died, and who was behind it. Thanks. The fragment you showed me in that dark theater was there to open my eyes. Many, many games have gone by, waiting for you to become a true witch of truth. But I think there was a purpose to it all. After all, now in this final game, you really have become a witch of truth. Tell me, what happened on that island that day? I won't ask you to tell me directly, so guide me. What can I do to reach the truth? 
It's a bit too chilly here. Let's move. To where? To a place better for drinking tea. We're back in uh, Miko Land? A massive applause filled the hall. It was an applause in honor of a good fight. An applause in honor of Burncastle. Yes, Lady Burncastle's game was another splendid one. We're going to reveal her game board to everyone here. We'll have a go at it. It's pretty awesome. But we solved it in the end, all the same. A game that no one can solve isn't a game. The main point is whether it was fun or not. It's fun. I guarantee it's quality. Same here. At first, I thought there was no way anyone could solve it, but the way you can use one confirmed purple statement after another to narrow down the suspects made for a great puzzle. Come, everyone, gather, gather. Just what sort of game is Lady Burncastle's mystery? That's for you to find out for yourself. Objects resembling chessboards were set out on several tables. Crowds gathered around each, looking down with interest. Ho ho! Ho, -ho. It's like a logic puzzle. Quite an orthodox one, don't you think? So this is what a witch's game is like. Hmm. Looking at it like this, it's just a game. But for the pieces, it's a massive series of crimes. <laughs> Indeed it is. It would not do to waste such a rare gift from Lady Burncastle. Let us take this opportunity to enjoy ourselves. Still, this is a tough one. It almost makes you wonder if it was made to be solvable, doesn't it? If you don't start by believing that it's made to be solvable, you won't get anywhere. A battle of which doesn't begin until you trust the questioner and believe that it can be solved. And we guarantee that it is. Come on, have a go at it. With Battler's encouragement, discussions over Baron Castle's mystery game began at each table. The mix of humans and illusions and heated debate was truly a sight to behold. Beato and Burncastle sat in a chair far off from the discussions. Would you like some tea? Any kind of calming black tea for me. With milk, if you don't mind. As you wish. Is there anything you need, Lady Burncastle? Please add some dried plums to some black tea. That's the trick to making terrible tea drinkable. <laughs> Come now, don't sulk. We're honestly compl complimenting your game for being such a fun one. Beto, who had emerged victorious in the game Bert Castle had put all her heart into, was in extremely high spirits. I'm not sulking. My face just looks this way. <laughs> when I managed to spot Burns' own kind of warmth in that expression, I felt like I climbed the pitch, the pitch black top of a snowy mountain to find a beautiful star. Well, Sorry for having an eternally frosty face. How difficult it is to compliment Lady Burncastle. No matter what you say, she always takes it in a bad way. That's okay. She's the type who will keep thinking about it for hours later on. <laughs> the type who lies in bed relishing it while hugging her pillow. Yep, that's burn for you. Beato and Lambda Delta giggled together. Burncastle shrugged and looked away. 
But seriously though, that really was a fun game with a twist. You think so? Thank you. You could have made it unsolvable, but you still made it to be solved. You couldn't have done that unless you planned on playing fair and enjoying the game. I like games where I win no matter what. Games that I might lose are just a pain. Later, I'd like to switch sides and try another one. I'll make a puzzle, and we'll see if you can solve it. A game for you to win against me. Of course, I'll use all the know-how I've picked up in my fight with Bea to make it super hard. I'm not giving up my winning streak that easily. Both you and Beato have such an interesting way of thinking. How's that? A game is just a means to decide who wins and who loses, right? When you create one, your own victory should be your highest priority. So, why would you go through all the trouble of making a game you might lose? What fun is there in a game you always win? That's not even a game. Victory and defeat. It's fun because you're taking part in a fair competition, balanced between those two outcomes. A game isn't a fight. It's communication. You have to enjoy the means. And if you manage to win in the end, well, that's just an added bonus. Finally. Finally, I clearly understand the difference between how all of you think and how I think. What do you mean? For you, this is communication. It isn't for me. The world you live in must be pretty savage. And what about you? Wasn't it the same for you? Until you understood Beato's game, an eternal game is eternal torture. Have you already completely forgotten about that pain you suffered? There were days I did think that, but now it's all been resolved. I won't complain about stuff that's in the past. I'm impartial, you might say. That is the critical difference between you and me, I think. Your eternal torture was something you could laugh off and forget. Mine wasn't nearly so trivial. That's all there is to it. I don't know your history. It sounds like you had it rough. <laughs> To think I'm getting sympathy from a mere former piece. I must be getting old. Burncastle, sipping the black tea that Genji had brought her, gazed up at the ceiling with a faraway look. Battler may not have known her history, but even he was able to understand a bit of how she felt. Are you being tortured by someone right now? Are you kidding? I'm as free as can be. I'm not bound by anyone's shackles. And that's a good thing, isn't it? Well, these things are better for you now. True. It's much better now than it once was. Though I am on a long, endless journey to escape from boredom. At the very least, us meeting here should have been a good thing for you. Indeed. Even the taste of defeat can keep my boredom at bay somewhat. No, no. Battler shook his head and laughed. We're friends who've enjoyed fighting in a fair game. So? If your days are filled with nothing but running away from boredom, feel free to drop by our place every now and then. We'd love to welcome a friend, and we'll be able to set up everything needed to help a friend escape from boredom. 
You think you can prepare a welcome, interesting enough to help me, the great burn captain, escape boredom for even a single night? I do? That's what it means to be a friend. We won tonight's game. So, the next time you come, we'll switch sides. This time, we'll entertain you with one of our games. Of course, we don't intend to let you win easily. We'll challenge you to a devilishly twisted watchy game. It won't be something you solve in a night. It'll be good enough to make you save months racking your brains over it. You would entertain me, the Great Burn Castle, as a friend? Yeah. We would. <laughs> That's for talking with you. Even this dried plum tea is starting to taste sickly sweet. What a pain. I heard from Beato. Sounds like this dried plum tea stuff is one of your favorites. Next time, we'll throw on some high class dried plums covered in gold leaf. So make sure you come again. If you really plan to do that, Try finding some better tea to start with. I'll never feel like coming again if you keep serving tea like this. <laughs> Come on. I guess the tea you're used to drinking is pretty damn high class. Next time, why don't you invite us somewhere we can drink some of that? Me? Invite you over? <laughs> It's only fair, right? We've treated you. Now it's your turn. Yes, it would be only fair. So, let's have the game be fair too. Let's switch sides and start a new game. I'm looking forward to it. We won this time. But who knows about the next? That's some confidence you have there. And yet, I'm afraid you're mistaken on one point. What's that? My game isn't over yet. I wonder who will win in the end. After taking one more sip of her black tea, Burncastle set her cup on the table, wearing a thin smile. The tea here is far too sweet. It was a mistake to have any. Thank you, Genji. Take this away, please. As you wish. Burnkas asked for her tea to be taken away after taking only two sips. Battler smiled, realizing that this was just Burn's way of being shy. And I think that will be the end for today. Oh, hey, there we are. Yeah, you know what, let's start writing over the first stuff. Yeah, that's um Yeah. Erica's back. Are they? They're a pair now, huh? As are they. Lord Battler and his wife. Battler, the territory lord of the game board, and his wife, Beatrice. After their wedding in the sixth game, they became a happy married couple. In the past, Battler emerged victorious at the end of his long-lasting game with Beato, and he reached all the truths behind everything. Now, in this final game, they have invited Battler's little sister, Angie. Just what sort of tale will he weave with Beato by his side? Willard H. Wright, Ishramia Leon. While carrying out a job as an Inquisitor of Heresy at Pern's request, Willard met Leon. In the final stages of the tale, he rejected the tragedy presented by the Witch of Miracles. In search of a happy ending, they have wandered through the Sea of Fragments, putting their lives on the line. They are now under Lady Lambda Delta's protection. Furuto Erika, the Witch of Truth who was successfully revived from the depths of oblivion. She is an enigma, a witch who is also a detective and a human. <laughs> because of course she is. Once again, she will serve her master Burncastle in her scheming. Eva Beatrice the witch who returned alive from the legend of the witch serial murders and inherited the name of Beatrice. 
She uses the Eva culprit theory to refute all other existing theories regarding the cat box. At the same time, she can use the Eva culprit theory to create endless tragedies with herself as the culprit. Perhaps she could also be called the lid separating the inside of the and the outside of the cat box. Of course, she knows what's inside the cat box. Well, then she's just an asshole, isn't she? Anywho, that'll be it for today. Thank you for the entertaining discussion today. The story that I followed, all that jazz. And after this, I'm going to fix the text under the stream box. So, see you later, guys.